In this episode, we're going to brighten things up. We're going high key. Plus, we'll take a look at a giant lollipop. Stick around, it's going to be a great show. Hi, welcome to Snapshot, the show that's all about taking better photos and taking better video. I'm your host, Dennis Rule, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at the inverse square law of light, but this time how it applies to high key photography. We're also got some other great tips, like in Speed Light Corner, we're going to take a look at a giant lollipop, and we've got a whole lot more for you too. But first, I'd like to say thanks to all of the viewers who sent in comments about the last episode. We really did appreciate reading them and we really enjoyed the feedback. I'd like to share a couple with you now. Michael wrote, hey, great show. I really enjoyed watching it. You might want to consider making the show shorter so that the tutorials are more searchable and easier to find on YouTube. And ones like this from Mary. Wow, great show. I'm having trouble viewing the photos that you posted on Flickr. I'm using a smartphone. Well, these are both great concerns and we decided to do something about it. We've created snapshotshow.com and on that website, you're going to find a page for each show, a detailed index with a timestamp so you can click and go directly to your favorite tutorial. You'll also find the thumbnail photos there and the high res photos as well. So you can go in and study all of the little lighting details that show up in the high res. So keep sending us your input. We really do need it to make the show better and uh, make it uh, more enjoyable for you to watch. All right, so now let's go in the studio and take a look at a high key setup. So in our previous episode, we did everything with a black background. This week, we're doing it with a white background. So we're going to go after the high key look, and we're still looking at the fall off of light. So let's take a look. We've got our model roughly four feet, five feet away from the background. Uh, she's dressed in white, a white background, and we've got a 48-inch uh, Octabox, the uh, Rapid Box from uh, Aurora, the, flyer, the Firefly, and it's a great light. I'm going to get you to look right into it, and we'll take a shot. Great photo. Now look what happens to our background. It goes gray. So I've moved our model three feet towards or away from the background and one meter for my friends on the metric side of the world. We've moved our light exactly one meter so our settings are exactly the same. We've just increased the distance between the model and the background. Watch what happens when we take a shot. Lighting is the same. I'm going to get you to look right into the light for me. One, two, three. And look what happens to the background. It goes quite a bit grayer. So you can tell right now we've got a fall off of light. OK, so what I've done is I've got two lights in behind. I've got the Aurora um, Unilever Pros, uh, the Fusion Pros, uh, again with the uh, small strip box. And what I've done is I've cross-lit them. So this light is actually pointing to this side, and this light is pointing to this side. So I've got a cross light pattern and when I use my light meter and I fire my lights, I've got F10 all the way across the back of my background. I've got F8 on my key light and so now I'm going to have a very high key crisp type shot. So here we are, we're ready to shoot. I've got uh, my cross lights going, I've got my main key light and you'll notice that the key light is feathered off to, uh, well, my left, her right and we'll take one shot and it's a high key shot. You'll notice that the background is evenly lit, very bright, very white, but we've got a big shadow on the uh, shadow side of the face, which is my right, her left. Okay, so to light up the shadow side of the face, I'm gonna bring in Paul, who's gonna hold a uh, triangular silver reflector, and he's just gonna hold that in. So the light is gonna bounce again uh, off the reflector and come in and fill the, the shadow side of the face. So one, two, three, a real quick shot. Excellent, come on this way just a little bit. Uh, look in a little bit more towards the light. Actually, look at my hand right here. One, two, three. Perfect, and there you have it, high key shot. Three simple lights, very, very simple steps, easy to do. In this episode's gear guide, I'm going to answer another great question that we got from the last episode. This tip applies to both the photographers and the videographers. Check it out. 
Okay, so one of the questions that I got from episode one was, what's the difference between an umbrella and a softbox? So I've set up a softbox. This is a, a 24 by 24 softbox, and it's the same size as the softbox that we used in episode one. The only difference is this time we have it in a continuous light. So you can see that the softbox is giving me uh, an amount of light that comes straight out, and we call it fall off, because as I bring my hand forward, you can see that it gets dark, it falls right off. If I look at the light pattern on Ethan's face, if I turn Ethan in towards the light, you can see that his face is now fully lit. As I turn him this way, you can see that the light gets darker on the far side. I can do the same thing by moving a light from one side to the other, and I can actually feather him right off and put him into semi-darkness just by moving the light uh, where I want to place it. You'll also notice on the background is that how I aim my light controls how much light hits the background. So with a softbox, I've got a lot of control and it's great for taking a small group or a single person. Okay, so in this shot, what we've done is we've set up the same light, same power intensity, but we've set up a, an umbrella. This is a 42 inch umbrella and I find that to be a, a very convenient size for a studio such as mine here because it's not too big, it's not too small. You can see the nice soft light that I'm getting over here on Ethan, but the light is spreading out pretty far. And there's actually a little bit more wraparound because you can see from here that there's a little bit more wraparound light. Ethan, I'm gonna get you to turn your chair just towards the light a little bit. Uh, very, very slowly come back towards me. And you can see that the shadow on his face is not as intense as it was with the softbox. My background is a lot more lit as well. And this is a reflective umbrella, so my light is coming in hitting the umbrella and coming back. It's a very large light source. This is great for lighting a small group of people, a family. Uh, you can do an awful lot with the umbrella and it's still one of my go-to items in the kit. But you can see that both lighting systems have their own characteristics. Okay, so this umbrella is what is called a convertible umbrella and uh, it's actually shoot through. I can just remove the outer skin here and take that off and now we've got some light coming in through here it actually becomes a lot less reflective coming this way because we've taken the reflective properties out so we're lighting uh, a whole lot more of the room you can see that the whole studio got quite a bit brighter the whole idea of this particular light is that uh, when you turn it around I can now aim it at my model and I end up with quite a wraparound light. It's very, very soft, but I'm lighting the whole room. So sometimes that can be something that, that you want to do, and it gives you the option with the wraparound umbrella, or with the shoot-through umbrella. If I just turn your Ethan over in towards the light, you'll notice that the shadows on the face um, are a lot more wraparound on both sides. So it can be a very, very pleasant light. As a matter of fact, it's great for doing some high key work as well. This week's quick tip is for the speed light users. And if you've ever wanted to have a modeling light on top of your speed light, it's really, really easy to do. Here's a very, very expensive, inexpensive uh, LED flashlight. It cost me a whole dollar and that was including the batteries. And I've just wrapped an elastic, a rubber band around the top of the uh, speed light here. And uh, now I've got a modeling light. It helps me see where my shadows are falling and it helps me uh, get better, faster focus, especially in a dark room. Uh, with just having that beam on. Um, don't worry about it affecting your photos. It's not going to do that. It's not powerful enough to overpower the flash. So if you want to make it a little bit tighter, you can get one of these Velcro straps. And again, they're available at uh, hardware stores. They're generally in the electrical section. Uh, they're meant for keeping uh, extension cords and ropes tidy in your, uh, in your storage area. So there you have it. Uh, one other thing, if you decide that you're going to use this in an umbrella uh, or in a uh, softbox, you might want to consider a slightly more powerful LED flashlight. It works a little bit better. That's your quick tip for this episode. So here's a shot I like to call the lollipop shot. And it's very, very simple to do. You need a 5-in-1 reflector. And in this case here, I'm using the soft gold side. It's actually half gold, half silver. And I've got it uh, up on a stand and I turn this over towards my speed light. I've got an SB900 speed light here, and uh, it's set up um, 
at, I'm zoomed in at 120 millimeters, so it's a fairly narrow beam that's hitting the reflector and the light is going to come back down. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of shots of Miranda and I'm going to show you that with this particular setup, I can not only light up her face, but I can light up her entire body. And it's really kind of neat. With the soft gold, it gives her a nice warm tan kind of look and we're deep in the winter right now, so uh, we like to have a tan. I've got Miranda standing in front of the red background. I've got my light bouncing into the lollipop and we're going to do a nice tight shot. Miranda, we're going to do that high school shot that you like so much. Excellent. So there you have it, one shot. Now we can do a little bit more than that because there's such a wide spread of light. I can actually back out here and we can do a full shot. And Miranda, give me that pose. Bring your, your back arm down just a bit. That's great. And watch this. We light the entire shot with just one speed light, a full body shot, and we get full spread. And I've got a bit of a flare. You'll notice that there's a bit of a flare. So what's happening is that the light here is actually spilling out towards my camera. So I'm going to ask Victoria to grab me a piece of gaffer tape, and uh, we're just going to put it on here and just give me a little bit of a spread so we get a block. And that's just going to filter the light a little bit. Perfect. And I come in and do the same shot. Ta-da! And just like that, magic, I don't have a flare anymore. Well, that's it. That's the end of episode two. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed putting it together for you. Don't forget to join us at snapshotshow.com. Uh, the photos from today's episode are already posted there. Like us on Facebook, we're at Snapshot Show and uh, check out some behind the scenes footage and check out the news for upcoming shows. Don't forget to leave us your comments down below, good or bad, we wanna hear from you. Uh, we wanna make the show better. If you have any suggestions for upcoming shows, we wanna hear that too. Subscribe to the channel, that way you won't miss the next show that's coming up on February 15th. So go out there and practice lots. Remember, pixels are free and we'll catch you on the next show. Bye for now. Yeah.